We're in the City Nisenkin uh, Sixth Form College in London in the Art and Design Department uh, where we're going to discuss and hopefully clarify uh, some of the issues associated with the teaching and assessment of the history of art and uh, critical and contextual studies and uh, the discuss the relationship between these two. The purpose of our discussion is uh, threefold. Um, first of all is to help teachers and lecturers who have been previously delivering the history of art uh, um, qualification and are now seeking guidance in changing from that to the critical contextual studies qualification in uh, art and design for WJC Educus. Um, the second purpose is uh, to raise awareness about CCS qualifications for teachers who are considering adding this uh, to the, uh, the options they presently offer uh, in art and design um, within their departments. And then uh, finally, it's to raise the standard and also broaden the range of uh, responses to the assessment objective one, which we call contextual understanding. And this applies to art and design qualifications across uh, all uh, titles. My name is Ivan Davis. I'm Chair of Examiners for w, uh, WJC Educus, uh, GCSE, AS and A-Level Art and Design. Uh, and I'm going to ask my colleagues to introduce themselves. I'm Mary Bradbury, WJC Educus Art and Design Subject Officer and um, I'm responsible for assessments in GCSE, AS, A-Level and Foundation. And I'm Jane Furley, I'm the subject leader for Critical and Contextual Studies at City and Islington Sixth Form in London. You've got some uh, uh, models there. Yeah. Uh, Jane, uh, shall we have a look at those? Well, I thought this was interesting because this is uh, a model for a Dada exhibition that was produced by a girl who was doing, as I recall, English history and critical and contextual studies. Right. And I suppose it's a good example of somebody who wasn't used to making mm. visual work, but found that through her study and her interest and her passion, clearly yes. for Dada, she um, wanted to do this. Wow. And it kind of worked. So uh, again, uh, oh, right. yes. Visitors, yes. And then she wrote a, a, yeah. a 3,000 word illustrated essay to go with it as well. So Jane, in your view, what are the main differences between history of art and critical contextual studies? I can only talk about my experience as a student studying history of art, not as a teacher teaching history of art, but I did the, an A-level that was called Art with Art History, which was a 50-50 split between practical art and doing the more academic study. And the academic side of that was very linear, and it was a study of male painters from Hogarth to the Pre-Raphaelites, and we loved it, and we got an awful lot out of it, but we weren't encouraged to debate or to um, challenge the sort of the authority view on these artists. Mm. Um, we were being taught to be connoisseurs of these artists, I think, really. And any comments that we might have had about them, I think, was seen as us kind of being a bit rebellious or deviating from this set script. Yeah. So I think one of the aspects of my teaching I've always been very keen to encourage is that students can have a voice because I felt that that was slightly denied us um, and I do think that's a way that teenagers can really engage with history of mm. art they understand the same issues we're, we're all humans and the artists are responding to human issues so they have a, an opinion that is worth hearing on these artworks. I think this is a good time perhaps to uh, uh, narrow the focus of our discussion a little and Jane, uh, perhaps you'd be good enough to take us through uh, some of the work of your um, CCS students. This is current work by our year 12, or well, one of our year 12 students. So all our students are working in small sketchbooks and most of their written work is taking place in sketchbooks and they're doing some drawing, particularly if they're fine art students, and they're taking their own photographs and analysing images. So the kinds of work that students may have produced in essay form, they're now producing in sketchbook form. This student has done a project 
We began with a project on autobiography or biography within portraiture, mm -hmm. and students were able to choose a kind of category of portraiture, and within that choose an artist who fitted with that category. And the students were all given the option to um, produce a concertina book in which they an analysed their portraits in more detail. So straight from the beginning of the course, we wanted to give students autonomy over the kinds of outcomes they were producing. So this is this is one of the concertina books. So this is a nice example by a girl who, who draws and writes. Yes. Who writes well. And we try and make sure there's opportunities for students to do very personal work. So I try and cover quite a broad history of art within the course, but I don't approach it chronologically. I approach it through themes. So the students have have done all sorts. So looking at portraits, portraits from different periods went into um, looking at the way in which galleries and museums display work. So the kinds of captions that they use, the kind of history that museums might be. So there are sort of curatorial considerations yeah. within it as well, aren't they? Mm. And then the outcome from that, instead of getting students to produce essays, which I might have done in the past, analysing the way in which a museum had displayed a particular object, following a trip to Tate, where they did some kind of primary research into the display of objects, the students got to present an object within the college building oh, and right. then write a questionnaire. Anywhere within the building? Or anywhere within the building. Right. And they could choose the method of display. So we've got plinths, which you can see dotted around, oh. and right. they could suspend work, they could put work on the floor, and they chose the caption that they wanted to use to promote this object, and they then questioned visitors asking for their feedback. Did they actually have a, a list of questions that they should be addressing or uh, yeah, did you structure it? Uh, it was structured. Or? They got to explore um, one floor of the new Tate building right. and then choose one, one artwork which they liked in particular. But instead of analysing the work, they were really looking at its proximity to another piece of work. Yes. So we revisited an interview which we'd looked at with Francis Bacon, sorry, with Tracy Emin talking about the display of her bed next to Francis Bacon's portraits mm -hmm. and how Tracy Emin talked about that relationship um, drawing out certain elements in her work. And so when we went to Tate, they, that's what their focus was, was thinking about, the kinds of meanings that museums right. foster. Right. How do you find the uh, humanities students deal with the drawing aspects of, of the work in the sketchbooks? They, they can be quite open to it. I don't have any students who are particularly reluctant to draw. I have had students I know I've taught in the past who wouldn't have wanted to at all. Um, and I remember talking to Ivan very early on and you said that a drawing has to it's not about producing a, a beautiful drawing, it's about producing a drawing that tells the viewer something mm. and it's informative and it's, mm. it's, it's analytical in some way. And I've explained that to the students and I think, I think they understand that. Right. We actually began the course looking at Hogarth's portrait of a painter and his pug mm. and students then were able to produce their own self-portraits where they thought about objects that defined them. So. Right. Um, we had this kind of strong autobiographical element going right from the beginning mm. of the course. And the way that we teach the first year CCS course is to teach two or three week projects, such right. as this introductory autobiography portrait project. And then students have the option to go back to one of these projects and develop it in much more detail in year 13. And the students are aware of this right from the beginning of the course. So uh, that's a, a fundamentally different approach than the traditional history of art uh, I think uh, so. course. If students develop this in year 13, there are, there's so much, there's such a body of, of writing and academic study relating to this that it would make a, make a sort of, it would make a, a project that would easily easily sustain them for that, right, that right, second right, year. Right. Do they take up careers, uh, do they go on to higher education in other places? Um, yeah, our students, uh, lots of our students go on to study history of art, um, almost all of our students go on to study one of the art subjects, right. but we have students who have gone on to the Courtauld, who've gone on to UCL, Manchester, um, University of East Anglia, 
um, and got one girl at Edinburgh University at the moment. So they go mm. all over the place to right. study history. And, and, and do you have contact with them? Uh, yes. Right. Yeah, so what, what sort of feedback do you get from them uh, uh, going from th this critical contextual studies approach? I think from the feedback I've got from former students, the works and the themes that we've covered on this A-level course have been directly relating to the kinds of projects that they've had to work on whilst at their, on their university, on their degrees. So for example, the um, students do a project on modernism looking at Clement Greenberg's arguments and the ex-students have contacted me to say how helpful that's been that they felt they've had a, a head start. Right. So this is a sketchbook belonging to one of our current year 13 students and she has she's about five weeks into her personal investigation um, so the way in which she this is also a girl who's a humanities student so right. she isn't studying right. other art subjects so the way she uses her sketchbook is very different from the way this girl is using mm -hmm. her sketchbook yeah. and she's looking at abstract expressionism so initially her theme was is broad and she's visited the Rothko room at Tate Modern and documented her thoughts when looking at these paintings. Uh, Jane, do, um, and this is for um, some of our teachers um, who are seeking to strengthen their, their uh, the students' responses to contextual understanding. Do you, when they go on a gallery visit, do you actually discuss what they're going to look at? Or are they capable of doing that themselves? Or The way in which the course is structured, the students have already done a short project on abstract expressionism which was linked to their project on modernism so they looked at how abstract expressionism grew out of um, late 19th century French painting um, and looked at key texts to explain that transition right. um, and so when the students chose their subjects they already had quite strong grounding in the themes that they were looking at right. so this girl for example already understood how crucial Clement Greenberg had been to um, as a supporter of abstract expressionism. Mm -hmm. So when they went to Tate Modern, they, their only remit really was to look at the artworks that related to their project right. and to right. already kind of look for those elements within those artworks mm -hmm. that related to their previous study, if that, if that makes sense. Yes. So well, it's, it's a question of relevance, isn't it? And some are uh, overwhelmed by uh, all the work they'll see in yeah. a gallery and uh, with with the kind of preparation they have they're able to focus I guess on yes, uh, what is really so. important for them to see. Yes. Well Jane I think we've uh, we've been inspired by uh, <laughs> what you've had to say and uh, I'm sure it's, it's really been uh, helpful to people who are uh, maybe a little bit anxious about switching from the more traditional approach uh, to history of art to a, a kind of contextual, uh, contextual studies option that we offer. Um, and not only that, I think that uh, um, the way that you're approaching it is, is so lively and um, uh, broadening the, the range of options and that, that people who are not necessarily intent on taking up the CCS option, uh, other titles, I, I think this is an admirable way of, uh, of uh, pointing them in the right direction as well. So thanks very much for your time and uh, we, uh, we wish you well. Uh, you and your students. Thank you, Thank you Jane. Thank you.